Well, uh, Brother Anthony. Brother Billy, uh, you, uh, you, uh, you're sitting there now, but you wasn't there, and I had going out with that before, and I, I, I hung up my jacket on you. Is okay. that right? Hang up no, because, you know, you, you're surrounded by books and maybe some chairs and a nice bin you got there is always empty because they like you, but you don't have a lot of hangers. Uh, you know, I, well, anyway, <clears throat> that's not what we're talking about today. <laughs> Here's the thing, Brother Petty. Mm -hmm. You know, I've talked to this a little bit time about perception and all that stuff. I also explained to you I don't believe in this whole racial black, white, whatever thing is a false construct to me. But, you know, people have taken it to heart over the years, you know, over the centuries. And uh, there's a thing they call racial profiling. Mm -hmm. And what that, no, that's just a big way of saying, like, A, if you see somebody that's a darker skin than you, and you, well, you got a, you know, an instrument of destruction, like a gun or whatever it is, or whatever they, you can use it against them. And then nothing will happen to you. Because the structure, the big power structure, you know, goes on. But this is not necessarily, then again, it is in Africa. You see? What they're doing is, it's not just, that's what I'm saying, I don't like this false construct of race. Because I think it happens to be uh, the haves and the have-nots. And they say, well, it's class war. Uh, not exactly that. Let me try to explain this another. Let me go back to my childhood in the South Bronx. Now, my first, well, not my first, well, look, my girlfriend, when I was 14 years old, you know, 14, they call it puppy love. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> but, you know, Renee Jeanette Fairley, beautiful, beautiful woman, girl. You know, we both the same age. She was actually she was born five days before me. She was an older woman. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, uh, you know, she lived, because I lived in the Patterson Projects, and we had, and just when I was of age, that age, uh, they had sent a lot of drugs into the community a few years early to get rid of the, disperse the gangs, because they was afraid the gangs would be being politicized by the likes of Malcolm X and, and, uh, and, and Elaine Hansberry and, and, uh, and, and uh, James Baldwin. You know, we were reading those kind of people and listening to those kind of people. The South, they were doing the whole, you know, kumbaya, you know, want to integrate, but we in the North, we were like, hey, something wrong here. <laughs> so we were listening to some, some more radical people, because they was, the fourth authorities, they were afraid that, you know, we were going to be politicized and the gangs would then turn against the system, as they, as it were. You know, this happened in Chicago, Blackstone, and they just, but anyway, <clears throat> anyway, it's gangs. But by the time we began getting my passing project, sort of, the gangs sort of dissipated and the gangs around, so, but we still had gangs. Now, Renee, my girlfriend at the time, uh, she lived on 147th Street between what's called St. Anne's Avenue and Willis Avenue. It's a very long block. Now that gang, that on that block, there was a every block, I mean, some blocks had gangs in it. Now that gang was a particularly vicious Puerto Rican gang called the Schemers. Hmm. And I think about a couple of blocks down on like the 145th or whatever, there was a gang called the Suicides. Maybe I get them confused, but anyway, but it was a gang. Now one thing about the gang is about turf. And they don't like people who are not like them, others. Now, it just so happened, you know, Renee, like me, like I said, we almost looked like twins when we, you know, when we just got together. Uh, we, you know, so she was, you know, she was black and uh, at, at the end of the block. She lived at the end of the block, close to St. Anne. So I had to come from the Patterson's, and I had to go through all the gang block. But you know something, they never bothered me. Why? Because I wasn't bothering one of their women, you know? And they realized that, you know, that, that you know, when they, she, and I guess nobody, when they and both, we were both like skinny little kids, you know, so I, I guess nobody was interested in Renee in that block, you know. So we were cool. So it was cool. So I had no problems with the gang, even though they knew us from the head of Patterson Project, another, another area, and I was really what we call an other. I was other than them. Now, when I look at that kind of book, let me tell you, let me get another, another, just a tiny big example. I know it's going to be kind of long here, but it, when I was older, like in the, in the 90s, there was a particular thing where, you know, people were besieged on, like, black people and, and killed them. I think in New York, it was like the Michael Stewart cake, the squad, all kinds of cases. There was a case in Brooklyn, I forgot the name of the brother. Anyway, in that area, I happened to have a, a girlfriend, not a girlfriend, an acquaintance, let's put it that way, pretty polite, that I would see sometimes in that area. Nice, nice, nice young lady. And uh, when, when this all was happening, I was in, in her place, and I, at night I was going home. And I come across some uh, some people of that area in Brooklyn. It's a white white area of Brooklyn, and they were sitting on the thing, looking for trouble. And I'm walking by. Ooh, they stopped me. 
blah, blah, blah. Now, we see, I'm from the South Bronx, and we have a certain code, da, da, da. but the thing is, we don't run away. You know, we just get, you got to vibe your way through. When I say vibe, you got to really push your thing, because you can't push it to a point where you're challenging, you know, six guys. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? Anyway, it turns out that they, they let me go. It's no problem, you know, so I kept on going. I bring all this up because in these days, when people make people others, so when you have this thing where you have a police force, for instance, that is of a, a one other, and they're, they're monitoring or enforcing in a neighborhood where they perceive these people to be other than them, other than human beings, less than them, or better, or better still, but, or maybe even they figure that, hey, if these people you know, rise up, it will threaten my way of life, or whatever they're thinking, and this is a worldwide. This is not just, once you make somebody another and they're no longer human to you, and more importantly, here's the trick, here's the big problem. They got firepower. Mm. They got, uh, yeah, they may use rubber bullets one day, and you tear gas one day, but the next day, just like we happened two years ago, it was Americana anniversary, about them, they might use live bullets, even on the same people, as long as they're the others. And now um, these people, here's the other trick. The people that are, are being monitored, they can't become a part of the police force because they come upon the police force, then they can know some, well, my point really is in that whole thing, is that they are just, their system, at least in New York, we were systematically deprived of that because if, if they put you through a, to call a system for any, you have any kind of record, that means you can't get a job in something like the police force. So now you have a community that you deprive of policing themselves, or deprived of jobs, and you see how that vicious circle goes and all. It's like a systemic thing. So all the problems that happen in the world today, you're not going to get rid of it because this, this this systemicness of it prevents you from doing that. And a perfect example: you get a president of a country or a prime minister, whatever have you. They can't do anything because the system that they're in has perpetu perpetuated this otherness mm. and this this culture of. Uh, we're going to take all that we can. And even if you complain, we'll, we'll delay it through our court system. So even if you get justice five, six, whatever years later, well, we've done a whole lot of damage in those five or six years. We've further inculcated, I got that, that's a nice word, inculcated the system with our way of thinking of making people others. Mm. So I know this is that kind of complicated. I was thinking about it. And I'm just thinking, how do you stop this? Hmm. I think the system is based on economics. So you have to not destroy, you have to alter the economic system so there is no economic incentive for them to, to make a bullet to shoot you. There's no incentive for them to, uh, to make a situation where they're taking from you and then they have to defend their taking from you by, well, making you a criminal rather than them who have been taking from you the criminal. See, it's that whole reverse kind of thing that they, that is happening. But these are just thoughts. You know, it's only coming from the from, from the Arts Director Emeritus and this one of those dispatches from me, the Arts Director Emeritus, that would be T. Me, T. From the Pattersons. I mentioned that Patterson Project South Oil. Taking the trench to bet letting you know what I only suspect. Oh,